welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa. Today I've got a great video for you that includes some of my favorite warm and cozy winter breakfast recipes. I don't know about you, but a cold smoothie on a cold morning is just not what I am in the mood for during this season. So I wanted to give you some healthy breakfast recipes that are nourishing, they're really warming, and they're also really easy to make. All of these recipes are up on the blog for you, so if you want to make any of them, you can find the links in the description box below. They are all gluten-free, they are all really healthy, and the ones that are not vegan, I have included vegan substitutions. So hopefully there's something for everybody here. And before we dive in, I would just love to say if you are not yet part of our community, I would love for you to subscribe. There's a red button right below this video. It says subscribe. You can tap that button. And if you like what you see, there is tons more for you to check out, and there's always tons more coming your way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first breakfast recipe that we're gonna make is a hot chocolate quinoa breakfast bowl. We're gonna start by adding some quinoa flakes into a small saucepan, followed by some cacao powder, some protein powder, which is optional, some plant milk and water, and then finish it off with some mashed banana, which adds nice sweetness. And then we are basically just going to cook this until it thickens. It should take about 90 seconds or so. You can just let it simmer, stir it occasionally, and once it gets to the thickness that you are liking, you can transfer it into your bowl. Now, as you see here, as I'm transferring it into my bowl, this is kind of the texture of cream of wheat. It's a little bit thinner than most oatmeals, but I personally like it this way. You could cook it a little bit longer if you want it a little bit thicker. And to finish it off, I wanted to kind of taste like hot cocoa. So I added some coconut yogurt on top, which acted as my quote unquote whipped cream. And then I added in some chocolate chips for extra sweetness and a little bit of maple syrup to finish it off for that added decadence. All of that is totally optional, but adds a really nice flavor and creaminess to it. Otherwise, that's it for this one. You can dig right in and enjoy. Our second recipe are my fluffy gingerbread waffles. We're gonna start by separating three eggs into two separate bowls. Once you have them separated, we are going to whip our egg whites. And I think that you could try to use aquafaba here. I haven't tested it, but others have said that aquafaba works really well in eggs. I just personally haven't tried it. Basically, you're just gonna whip this all together until it turns into stiff peaks. From there, you can set it aside and move on to your other wet ingredients. So we've got the egg yolks as our base. Add in some non-dairy milk, some oil, and some molasses. And then we are going to whisk that together until it's smooth. Set that aside, and then we'll move on to our dry ingredients. For our dry ingredients, the base is almond flour. You're also gonna add in some quinoa flour, some flaxseed meal, baking powder, cinnamon, pinch of sea salt, and just whisk that together until it's nice and smooth. Then you are going to add your yolk mixture in first, and this is going to help you get a smooth, thick-ish dough. Once it's all combined, you can fold in your egg whites, and you wanna fold those in at the end so that you can keep as much air as possible, and that is what's gonna help you get that nice, fluffy texture. And you can see the batter is full of air bubbles and still has some egg whites in there, and that, again, is what's gonna keep it nice and fluffy. So let's cook these babies up. Up. For gluten-free waffles, you want to cook them like medium-high to get them nice and cooked through. And you're just going to add about a quarter cup of batter onto your waffle iron. Cook it until the waffle iron says it's done. Mine has a light that shows me. Others might be different. For serving, I like to, again, add some creaminess on top. So we've got some coconut yogurt. You could also do coconut whip or whatever non-dairy yogurt you like. A drizzle of molasses, which gives it that really nice kind of gingerbread-y flavor, and then some maple syrup because you can't have waffles or pancakes without maple syrup, in my opinion. And it just is the perfect finish to these holiday-inspired waffles. So then you can just dig right in. You can see the texture is gorgeous. It's got a really rich golden brown color that's from the dark molasses color. These are so yummy and they are perfect for the holiday season. And last but not least, we are making my pumpkin coffee cake. So to start, we're gonna make the topping actually. That is some almond flour, quinoa flour, chopped pecans, a little bit of maple syrup, and some oil. And you can just stir that all together until it's a nice texture. It's gonna be kind of sandy and crumbly. And you can just set that aside while we move on to the rest of the cake. So for the cake, we are going to add all of our flours into a bowl, as well as some coconut sugar, coconut flour, some baking powder, cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and cloves. Those are those pumpkin pie spices, as well as a pinch of sea salt, and stir that together until it is smooth. 
Then you can set that aside and move on to the wet ingredients. So the wet ingredients is two eggs. I think you could use flax eggs here and that would be perfectly fine. Beat those together and then you can add in some non-dairy milk as well as some pumpkin puree, some oil, and some maple syrup. And again, stir that together until it's nice and smooth. Then you can just pour the wet ingredients into your flour mixture and stir it all together until you have a gorgeous smooth batter that smells amazing, smells like pumpkin pie. You can transfer this amazing batter into a parchment lined baking pan and then just use your spatula to kind of push it into the edges and smooth it over on the top. Once you've got it all nice and evenly spread out in that container, you will use the topping that you made earlier to just sprinkle it on top. And this is what's gonna act as our crumble topping. It bakes up so beautifully. Once you've got your topping on there, just pop this in a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes. I recommend that you allow this to cool completely before you slice it. It just helps you retain the best texture. So once it's cooled, you can slice it into your squares and serve it up. I love serving this warm with some tea or coffee. It's just a really nice light breakfast or even a great afternoon snack. And you could also drizzle it with some nut butter to make it a little bit more filling if you wanted. But either way, it is so scrumptious. It's perfect for this season. It's got all those nice warm spices and it has the most amazing soft texture. And there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I can't wait to hear what breakfast recipes you try. I am a big fan of those chocolate quinoa flakes. They are so good and they're just like so comforting. And they remind me of hot chocolate and there's nothing better than starting your day with chocolate. So I hope you guys give them a try. If you do, make sure to share a photo with me on Instagram. You can tag at Simply Quinoa or use hashtag Simply Quinoa. Like I mentioned, all of the recipes are up on the blog, so I've put the links down in the description box below. And if you have any feedback, any questions, any comments, anything like that, you can always use that comment box down below as well. I read every single one. So thank you guys so much for being here. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. There's a red button right below this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.